Um, so we're gonna restore this. Uh, even though the handle is awful, the head looks like it's great. Uh, maybe need some resurfacing, and of course it could use a nice polish. Um, but we're gonna try to get this old handle out of here um, and put a nice wooden handle, uh, make this hammer great again. So the first thing we'll do is grind all of this off. And the rod is loose, uh, comes right out. Well, it's not lumpy anymore, um, but I don't think it's quite flat yet. Uh, so I'll keep going a little bit more, um, and I'll flip it over, and you can see the bottom uh, definitely needs a lot of work. So I think that's good enough for now, um, because um, I'm gonna try to grind this side and pound this. Uh, you see there's a broken off steel pipe in there. Actually, before I spend too much time on grinding, I'm just gonna see if um, maybe the welds are weak enough I can pound it out. Eh, I'm probably gonna have to go ahead and grind a little more. A little more material off and I'll try to take another swing. It's a little bit hard to see um, what the weld on this side looks like, but maybe it's a little better than I thought it was. And it's still not coming out, so I'll just keep grinding away. Uh, maybe I'll come back to this side eventually. Looks like I'm getting to the bottom of this weld. I can see a big crack here and a little bit growing from that side, so I'll keep taking material off. Uh, I can't get this crack to get much bigger and just starting to touch um, the sides of the hammer where I, where I don't want to grind too much off. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, keep going on this side now. So it's pretty flush right here. Uh, I don't want to take too much more material off either side, so I'm going to try to use a chisel, uh, see if I can break the weld around there, uh, and then maybe try to do the same on the other side if this works well. So this side is definitely loosened. Um, but this side is still pretty solid, so I'm gonna to try to come here with an end mill, uh, three quarter inch. Um, I'll go, I don't know, maybe an eighth inch deep or so, and try to clear the, that area out. Maybe that'll weaken it enough that I can whack it out. I just wanna point out that I'm only machining um, here where the welds are. Everything else on the hammer um, is probably hardened steel, about right where the weld is, um, because um, because it's hot, um, it's annealed right there. Um, so I should be able to machine through the weld, but I'm definitely not going to want to try to touch um, anywhere else which is hardened. Is good news. See that it broke through the weld right there. Um, so I think I'm going to do one more pass um, and then maybe try to hammer it again. So I think I've removed a lot of the weld material um, that I wouldn't have been able to do with the angle grinder. So I'm going to try again uh, with a hammer, see if I can break it through. After uh, some more hammering, I do see a little bit of cracking, uh, but we're going to try to step it up. Uh, we've got this old socket, it's stripped out, not useful for anything except um, for this press. We're going to try to just push out um, a broken pipe. We think this might give us enough force to do it. And I think it's working. We heard a pop. Um, and it looks like it's pushed down a little bit farther. So I'm going to release the pressure. And... Yep, it popped. Uh, this side's out farther. That milled slot was pretty much guesswork, but it's almost exactly the right size um, for what we needed, so I'll try to press it all the way out. Yeah, I'm seeing it move. And that's about as far as the press will take us. 
Uh, we should be able to hammer it the rest of the yeah, way. It feels pretty loose. And wow, just came right out. Uh, looks like we destroyed our socket, but oh well, um, it was already stripped, so good for a good cause. Now I'll drive out the socket, and this should be a lot easier than driving out the welded piece. With that out of the way, it's starting to look like we can do something with it. And you can see um, that milled slot, and then we did get rid of um, some of that weld bead. It's almost the perfect size and position. So that's pretty good guesswork. Most hammers have ground finishes, but I kind of want to try this carbide tooth fly cutter. Uh, maybe it'll leave some cool machine marks. I kind of like that. You can see it didn't touch all the way down over here, but I think it's a cool finish. Most hammers don't have machine marks like that. Some more, but I'm kind of liking that. And that's a pretty nice surface finish down here. Uh, up here, it's gets a little rough, but I'm really liking what I'm well, it seeing. It might not be here. its final state, um, but at least now it's flat, um, so I can flip it, um, put it down here, and get a parallel side. Still some rough patches. I think I'll go over it a few more times, maybe. So let's take a look at it. Uh, now both surfaces have been um, fly cut. Um, looking at it more in the light, uh, I guess it's not quite as smooth as uh, maybe thought before. You can see, um, especially around here where the weld was, uh, the sort of the type of steel changed and you can see that has a big effect. Uh, you can see it like a ring um, and also here where, where the weld was on that side. Uh, so next I'll do a little bit of cleanup on the wire wheel. Before I work too hard at trying to get all of this rust off, uh, I'm gonna let the vinegar do it for me. Um, so I'm just gonna put it in this jar. Um, and fill it up with vinegar. Let this soak overnight. Um, right, it's sitting overnight and uh, let's take it out and see what it looks like. We'll clean it up and see what it looks like. This is looking a lot better. I like the old patina look. Um, and it'll be used as blacksmith hammer, so I don't think it's a problem that it looks a little old. And we'll see what it looks like after buffing. And that's quite a difference. So there's a lot of dents here in the face, and I think I'm going to take care of that before I go to more aesthetic parts of the hammer. Um, so I'm going to try to file it out. I don't know exactly how hard it is. Um, it does feel like it's biting a little bit. Um, maybe that's the reason why it's dented, because it's not entirely hardened. Um, but this should uh, help me get a smoother face. I think it's equally important that we clean up the peen side too. Um, you can see there's a lot of pitting here, um, but I don't want to take off, uh, I think the finish here is pretty cool, so I uh, just want to take off material uh, where the hammer will be contacting um, what you're working on. So the hammering surfaces are all taken to shape. Um, and they're pretty clear of pits. Um, so I'm working now more on, uh, I was deburring the inside here, getting it nice and smooth, and then also just taking this to the belt, um, the belt sander, and the finish on top is a lot nicer. I think um, there are some residual machine marks, I think will go a little bit deeper, but I think, I think the grinding marks do look better than the machine marks. This hammerhead needs a handle, and this apple wood will do just the trick. I like this length here, so we'll go ahead and trim it down. Now we're gonna balance this out on the lathe, make sure it's not too much wobble. So it looks like it's pretty stable on the ends, but there's a lot of wobble in the middle, and I guess that's because it's slightly bowed. And to make it a little easier on myself, I'll go ahead and knock off some of these high spots. And 
And that should save a lot of time. Uh, it's a lot smoother. So you can see we've knocked off a lot of the big stuff. Um, still a lot to turn to get down to there. Uh, but it should be a little bit easier from here out. And this half is just about round. There's a bit more uh, I can take off there um, until I can start working on this other side. So I think this half is straight enough for now. Um, the gap is getting pretty large here, so I'm gonna move it over and start straightening out the second half. So it's pretty much straightened out. Uh, you can see this side is pretty smooth. This side has a lot of chatter. So the important part is that we don't go smaller than this diameter here. Um, otherwise, it won't fit properly, um, at least on one of the ends. So overall, I'm thinking um, we're going to have a straight section here, a little bit of a straight section here. That'll be the large diameter, and it'll start to taper down gradually all the way until it will fit in here. Um, and then at the end, I might go back and take a little bit off the top and the bottom here. So I think that means the next step is to take down this end here um, to this diameter um, to match up here. After we flatten um, these two sides, uh, it should be able to slide on with a little bit of room on the top. So I think this is about all I'm going to do on the lathe. Um, actually, I might sand a little more now, um, but I think. Uh, the other shaping that I'll do uh, will just be with a draw knife or something um, so that we can get this um, flattened so it can fit on um, and so I can do a little bit of flattening um, down here. And I'll go ahead and take the tourist off uh, and go ahead and sand this down. So this actually came off of the apple tree when we were printing it. It's been sitting for about a year, um, so it's working pretty well. Um, it's, it's pretty dry. Actually, we're going to try taking it off the lathe, um, and the belt sander um, should be good to remove the bulk of the material. That we need. It's really starting to feel more like a handle than just a cylinder. Um, I can sort of feel my hand fall into this one place. Uh, I think that feels really nice, it's starting to take shape. Thank you. 